Welcome to Liquid Lunch. We're coming at you live. It's uh, Tuesday, April 17th, 2012, and I have Rose here. It's been a while since you've been on the show, Rose. It's great to have you back on the show. Thank you so much, Hugh. And I was uh, trying to think about how long it's been, and I realize it's almost two years. Time flies. It's, wow. Yeah, time really flies. Well, and, and part of the reason we have you back today is because we have such a great show. That's and right. I know you have some knowledge about some of the material, so... Uh, that's right, and I can make uh, personal testimonials, actually. Well, I, I'm, I'm even wearing my Egyptian biogeometry on me right now. I'm sure I'm doing it all wrong. There's nothing to do wrong. But you just have to wear it. <laughs> but Dr. Kareem can tell us That's right. a little bit later in the show. That's because, right. Because uh, we've got uh, Dr. Ibrahim Kareem is here from uh, Egypt. Yes, we're very fortunate to have uh, such an illustrious guest with us. And uh, along with Pier Paolo Albergini, yeah. who works in close association with Dr. Kareem. Well, I gotta say, as soon as I heard about uh, the work of uh, both Dr. Kareem and Pier Paolo, I uh, was fascinated, wanted to get them on the show, and then here they are. Uh, and I didn't even almost do anything. It just sort of happened, so that's amazing. Yes, timing is everything it was meant to be. And also, I think just the synchronicity of everybody we got on the show today is great, yes. because also, just uh, we have uh, Rabbi Sharon Shalom here from, uh, well, he's originally from Ethiopia, but he's uh, now living in Israel, and he's here in Toronto. He's translated uh, the Hebrew law into Ethiopian, or and we're going to talk about the Hebrew law and all that kind of stuff, so uh, we're looking forward to that conversation coming up in a few minutes. Also, we have uh, Christine Demeester here. She's uh, She's got a book. Christine, I don't know where I put the book, but um, she's written a chapter in it. We're going to talk to her about all that. She's a, a coach. She's got a, a company called New Empowering Ways, and we're going to find out all about that. And the book is called Mastering the Art of Success, and uh, thanks, Randy. And um, she's written a chapter in there, so we're looking forward to that. Also, uh, another author, Blair Mills, is coming in. Mm. So he's got a book called... Uh, uh, wealthy Playgrounds, the fast track to uh, fire your boss and get overpaid for the rest of your life. So that's, of course, what we want, right? It's a full show and it sounds <laughs> like we better get going. Let's get going. <laughs> so, oh, but you're... Okay, yes. we will talk about that. But I know you're going to see, you've discovered that the Egyptian hieroglyphics are really meant to be viewed like film. I wouldn't say I've discovered it. I've heard that's true. Well, you've discovered for yourself that, right? No, but hopefully on Friday I will discover it for myself. Which is really interesting. Yes, because, uh, yes. Uh, maybe Dr. Kareem even knows something about that. I'm not sure. Or but may maybe maybe Rabbi Sharon Shalom knows. Because we're going to talk about a little bit about the Ark of the Covenant, oh. too. Which I've heard is either in Ethiopia or maybe it's on the moon. I heard it was on the moon, too. On the moon. Yeah. Don't ask how. Well, well, everything is everywhere, so I suppose it's true <laughs> in a way. <laughs> yeah. So why don't we take a little break? We're going to play some Faded Blue. We're going to come back with Rabbi Sharon Shalom as the lunch gets underway on a Tuesday. We'll be right back.
back on the show here that's uh, faded blue is our music today and uh, we're now here with uh, rabbi sharon shalom and rabbi great to have you on the show shalom hi hi now um we uh, there's so much we can talk about here and uh, so let's get right into it but you're from ethiopia originally yeah of course right originally from ethiopia and originally jewish yeah we're jewish in yeah. ethiopia yeah which a lot of people may not know even though some people, yeah, some people know that I the Ark of the Covenant is in yeah, Ethiopia. Yeah, of course. But there are Ethiopian Jews as well, that, right? Yeah. So what was that? Now, I understand the town you grew up in was almost exclusively Jewish community. Is that right? Yeah, of course. You know, uh, I remember um, I just met here mm -hmm. uh, in your uh, here office, yeah. Christian, and she told me, listen, I never met before a, a brown Jewish like you. I never, because m I know the Jewish, white Jewish, Europe Jewish, mm -hmm. but th this is my first time that I met here a li Jewish like you, originally Jewish. Oh. Oh, okay. not like Sammy Davis Jr. <laughs> 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 I, I'm, I'm, cu I'm curious, Sharon. Do you get that comment a lot? Is is that a, a common reaction people have to you? What? Do you it get that comment a lot? People are surprised that you're brown and also Jewish. Of course. Yes. Two years ago, I um, I uh, uh, visit in Washington, mm -hmm. and I take it took a taxi, mm -hmm. and the taxi driver he Afro American. Mm -hmm. Afro. And he, you know, um, and he asked me, excuse me, sir, where are you from? And I answer, I am from uh, Israel. And suddenly he was surprised. Excuse, have black people in Israel? And I answer, sir, I'm not black, I'm brown. <laughs> <laughs> but actually he continue and say, ah, I hear about you. You are Falasha. Mm. Falasha is mean stranger. Falasha is mean exile. So mm. I, when we uh, were in Ethiopia, the someone they not, you know, um, the Christians, Muslim, call this group, my group, Falasha, stranger. Mm. But I don't know why, but uh, I, uh, we prefer to call us beta Israel, it means house of Israel. Mm. And actually, um, uh, have a tree version how this group arrived to Ethiopia. Well, maybe we can get into that a little bit. But and bef So how did they, you know, what is the story of the Ethiopian Jews? Like how, you know, what is the origin of it? And also I'd like to know a little bit about, you know, how the relations are in Ethiopia between Jewish Ethiopians and Christian Ethiopians and Muslim Ethiopians? You know, actually, I want to tell you, the single place that Muslim and Christians and Jewish live together in love, in reunion, the single place in the world was in Ethiopia. Mm. Only in Ethiopia we can, in historic, historic mm -hmm. Ethiopia, you say Jewish and Christians and Muslim uh, hand by hand going together. This is only in a single place. Mm -hmm. But actually how Jewish Ethiopian arrived to Ethiopia have a lot of version. One of the versions say when uh, uh, the Queen Sheba <laughs> came to visit King Solomon in Yerushalayim, mm. King Solomon 
he saw Kun Shiba. She was brown, mm -hmm. and she say she's she saw she's very beautiful, mm -hmm. and she you know no number phone this time. So ah, you were very beautiful. So when sh King sh Queen Sheba mm -hmm. came go back to Ethiopia, she discovered that she pregnant, pregnant. She oh, baby she was pregnant. pregnant. She was pregnant. pregnant. How did that happen? Yeah, <laughs> <It's> miracle. <laughs> 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 discovered suddenly <laughs> maybe she spent time with King Solomon yeah or Spend somebody <laughs> <laughs> or so <laughs> okay and uh, when she bur uh, burn uh, the child in Ethiopia the uh, he give name for her son name is um, um, uh, of the son is um, uh, I forgot. Um, Menelik. 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 Okay. Okay. Menelik. He grow up, yeah. and he decided, I now I want to visit my father, King Solomon. Right. I now I d he decided to leave uh, uh, her family. Uh, uh, his leave family Ethiopia. A and visit in Jerusalem. And King Solomon receive him in big respect in honor. And in this time, okay, King uh, Menelik took the Ark of Convenant oh. from Jerusalem, and he took with him to Ethiopia. Sorry, oh. did he take it or was he given it? This is a <laughs> good question. I we don't know <laughs> if he stole. Maybe uh, King Solomon gave him. We don't know, mm -hmm. but. The uh, fact is, the uh, uh, Ark of Co Convenant, uh, with uh, our uh, the tradition say now uh, he uh, we can found it in a uh, church, big church in Aksum in Ethiopia. In Ethiopia, yeah. Is it there? Maybe. Have you been there to that church? Yes. Yeah. I la two years ago I visited there. Yeah. And I asked someone, where is the convenant? And he told me, listen, don't ask, stop here. Right. Because when the uh, Israel and the world uh, began to speak uh, about the continent, the Ethiopian, uh, the church, uh, the Christian, they're very scared because maybe the Mossad. Or somebody, yeah. Somebody of, from Israel come and Remember took that. again take again the convent to you, Shalom. Well, here we are, we're talking about it, and we've <laughs> seen it. I've seen it on TV, where that church in that town. Yeah. Right? Um, you'd think that somebody would maybe want to find out. Maybe. I don't know, but this is one, t uh, one this is version that w in this time, right. King Solomon sent with, send, uh, sent with, uh, with uh, Menelik Jewish people with him, and the Jewish people that they came with, with Menelik stay in Ethiopia. And actually, Jewish, Ethiopian Jewish, they are descendants of this group that they uh, came with Menelik at this time. Okay. And, this, and the second version say that we are uh, uh, descendants of 10 tribes. Yeah. Mm. Okay? Yeah. So until this, you know, uh, 2000, uh, 2,000 years of exile, we sit, in, sit here and, and waiting for the day that God, God promised in the Bible that in the future, all the Jewish people, they return to Jerusalem and can build a uh, state. Okay? Right. okay? We read with the, with the Bible. Okay, actually, um, uh, I remember when my grandfathers in our village, we he sit with us under a shady tree in without any electricity, no TV like today in uh, Toronto, in uh, in <laughs> everything, you know, iPhone, mm -hmm. <laughs> iPhone, maybe iPhone, I fall, <laughs> you know, iPhone is I fall. Uh, anyway, uh, no electricity, and he told us. One day we going to Yerushalayim. Mm -hmm. 
In Yerushalayim, all the building of gold. And you sit like this, like the king, no sicknesses. All the, all the time you're happy, and you eat honey, <laughs> and you drink milk, <laughs> and you're happy all the time. The that's what we all want. <laughs> yeah, the land of milk and honey. So I ask, <laughs> we have the right guest today. <laughs> I ask, what is this place? What uh -huh. is? Yeah. And my grandfather point like this: go straight, go straight. And I promise to you, if you go you straight, at the end you 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 will find you Shalai. So is it is that a physical place, or is that a, a is that a, a, a mental, emotional, physical. spiritual place? Physically. We believe that when we arrive to Yerushalayim, um, this absolutely, we believe that when we arrive to Yerushalayim, so we can sit like this and eat honey and happy all the time, no sicknesses, no problem, and this. Okay, when's that going to happen? Because we're getting a little anxious <laughs> around here. We want we want that now. But w when is that going to happen? And what is it going to take? for us as human beings to get to that today that point in Jerusalem in today with the, oh, excuse me when you are there today it, yeah. do you find that to be the truth a big a big uh, crisis uh -huh. crisis okay because have dream and reality and uh, actually i want to tell you i i uh, i marry my wife and i have four children Actually, before you, um, maybe uh, let me to explain to you. Uh, you know, wha one uh, person, he dream, dream, dreamer. Mm -hmm. And he arrived to the next world, to the paradise, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay? And this was only dream. But had a big, um, big uh, gap between dream and reality. Mm -hmm. When I marry, before I marry, was like tourist. Mm -hmm. I know my my wife, mm -hmm. but after I marry, this is a reality. Before you marry, this may be dream. <laughs> okay. Okay? Yeah. After the marry, this is a reality. Right. I, of why? Was no, it no, better? No, I, Was I'm, it better? I'm with you so uh, far. Uh, better than the dream? Uh, <laughs> I think <laughs> if uh, you must dream mm -hmm. for reality. Yes. You must if you not know, dream, you never You can have to dream first. Yeah. So once you have that dream, then you can start to work towards it. Yeah. Right? You can bring it to reality. Uh, uh, to, <laughs> uh, to bring it to reality and when the when you found the reality, you must create a dream a new dream. A new dream. Because you dream mm -hmm. and reality after reality again yes. have a dream. Yes. So today in uh, when we arrive to Jewish Ethiopian, we leave our village and go with our foot during two months through a Sudan country and we arrive uh, with operation the Mossad, the secret secret uh, service in Yerushalayim and we were in shock, mm. big shock, because, you know, I, for example, someone, the first uh, meeting with Yerushalayim here, I can read you, soon after Operation Moses, the big Operation Moses. That was the airlift where they brought the Ethiopian Jews to Israel? To Israel. Okay. Soon after Operation Moses, the spiritual leaders of the Ethiopian Jewish community, the Casey, name is Casey. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So we're invited on tour of Yerush Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. The last stop of the day was the Western Wall Plaza. One case raised his hand and asked, where is the Yerushalayim? Where is Jer Jerusalem? Where is the gold? Mm -hmm. Where is the honey? Where is the milk? <laughs> Jacob, <laughs> Jacob, <laughs> the Jewish agency guide, answered, we have been in Yerushalayim all day, and now we are at the Western Wall. The case then asked, where, where, and where is the temple? Jacob pointed towards the temple mount. At the moment, they all, the f all fell to the ground. 
protesting themselves and crying like children. Mm -hmm. Because this is for them was a big cri crisis. Mm -hmm. Because the dream, the dream, but the reality, the reality. Was a little less milk and honey than the dream. A, a little, yeah. a little, yeah, a little. So are we ever going to get to that milk and honey state? No, yeah. Uh, if we... Are we going to get to that state where we're living in the dream of the land of milk and honey, where, where, where everyone is happy, where everyone now, has enough? I, now, in, 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 in the, yeah. uh, I think I have a big problem. You know, it's, it's, it's not easy, but actually, uh, actually, if I understand you, uh, now Ethiopian Jewish community in Israel, they must, you know, create it. They uh, know a lot of honey, know a lot of milk, but it's not enough for them. Uh, but um, actually, I believe, I believe, and I, in the future, Ethiopian Jewish community can create a new dream mm -hmm. also in, uh, uh, in Yerushalayim. In, uh, in Israel. No, actually, you know, I, when I, maybe. No, I was just going to say we can have it, but we have to do our part to achieve the world of, of milk and honey and gold. We have to do our part. Part? What is part? Uh, we have to make an effort. We let have, okay, go let ahead. Let me ask another question mm -hmm. and, and try yeah. to get to that yeah. because you're here in Toronto and you've, you've written a book, um, and you're, you, you lecture at Bar Ilan University in yeah. Tel Aviv on Jewish law. Yeah. Can we talk about Jewish law for a minute? Because in a sense, I think that uh, the Jewish law got, got, um, was brought into Christianity. It, 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 it formed the basis of the law of the, of the entire Western world that we are today. Yeah. And, and um, how important is the law? And what happens if we, as a society, s you know, s fail to, to, to respect the law? Uh, it's a good question. And uh, to you, good question to you, but I, <laughs> I yet <laughs> I don't understand. Excuse me. That's OK. Uh, you know, God speak with us. God speak with in Mount Sinai mm -hmm. and give us to Israel people give the Bible, okay, in Mount Sinai. So the Bible, this, this, the same the Bible that um, exists in Muslim, mm -hmm. okay, exists in, uh, in a Christian, Christians, and Jewish too, because the basics is very similar. But each one understand uh, for, for, um, uh, for his, uh, believe, okay? Mm -hmm. Muslim have Muhammad, a Christian have uh, Yeshu yes. mm -hmm. Yeshua. Yeshua. Yeah? Yeah. And for, uh, for um, a Jewish have uh, uh, Moshe. Moshe is? Moses. Moses. Yeah. Okay? So if today Muhammad come to here mm -hmm. and Moses come to here and Joshua come to here, Nobody can recognize them. Mm -hmm. Moshe, I don't, if Jewish people recognize him in Jewish. Mm -hmm. Say, that, no, you are no Jewish. Mm -hmm. No, he probably looks nothing like, um, well, what's his name? What? You Do you mean that the teachings have been distorted? Because every, yeah. uh, everything will change. Yes. Even Muhammad, if come to here, he actually, he can, uh, recognize what's his mask, yes. okay? Moshe Rabbeinu, if Moses come here, say, what's this synagogue, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. What's a synagogue, what's his mask? Mm -hmm. And uh, Joshua come, what's this uh, uh, church, church mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Because everything will change. Mm -hmm. This is a culture. Mm -hmm. So Ethiopian Jewish community, they went and they never contact during 2,000 years with the Jewish people in the world. Mm -hmm. They believe that they stay only Jew after second temple destruction. Mm -hmm. The first meeting with the rest Jewish, Europe Jewish, 
was in 1867, mm -hmm. when professor, big professor, name is Yosef Halevi, came to Ethiopia to visit Ethiopian Jewish community. They can't believe him that he is Jewish. Mm -hmm. mm. I uh, tell them, I am Jewish. No, you liar. Why? Because you white. Mm. And we never mm. met mm. white Jewish. Mm -hmm. And he swear, I'm Jewish. I have a Bible. Ba no, no, you know Jewish. Only when Yosef Alevi mentioned Yerushalayim, Jerusalem, believe him, Yosef Alevi actually is Jewish. But the, the law that among exists among Ethiopian Jewish very different than the law exists in Ashkenazi in Europe Jewish because this is a culture. And I, uh, so in Israel, um, without the crisis, you know, no honey, no milk, have a big cri crisis, have also spiritual mm. uh, uh, tradition crisis because Ethiopian Jewish came to Israel if very particular, very particular, and very changed. So do they, do they see that it's a very secular type of, of culture? Is, is that what bothers them, that it's a secular rather than a, a very religious? Very secular, yeah, very mm -hmm. secular. Mm -hmm. And someone, when we arrived to uh, Yerushalayim, and 80% uh, in Israel, no religious. Mm -hmm. mm. But in Ethiopia, all of them was religious. Mm -hmm. And they came to Yerushalayim, a holy city, and, and say oh, all most of them no religious. So mm -hmm. how, but when we arrived, when we was, were in Ethiopia, we thought that all the people living in Jerusalem, they actually religious. And now 80% no religious. Right. Mm -hmm. So I try in, um, only one month ago, uh, uh, I, book, I, I wrote a book uh, to say what, uh, to, you know, to show what exists in e Ethiopian Jewish. Yeah. Okay, in the other hand, what uh, same, same uh, tradition, what going on in the Europe Jewish, Europe uh, tradition. Okay, so here's the book, and in English it's called, um, what's it called? Uh, from Sinai. It's called from Sinai. Yeah. Am I doing it wrong? Yeah, of course. <laughs> 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 yeah, of course. Yeah. From Sinai to Ethiopia. Right. So it's a comparison between the sorry the, the Ashkenazi uh, <laughs> Jewish l law tradition and the Ethiopian Jewish law tradition. Is that right? Yeah, of course. Exactly. Okay. And I, when I uh, tell this here, when I try to tell, you know. We, uh, we must give respect to each other. Mm. Is there, uh, I, I would imagine that there may be some differences, but fundamentally, it's got to be the same at a fundamental level. Is that not true? Good. The law. The law. Yeah. Fundamentally, it, it must be very similar. Of course, because, you know, have a um, uh, um, uh, big Mishnah in book on the Jewish law, Say why God created the world in one person? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because the God can create in one minute 60 million people. But God begins all the world, all the people in one person, name is Adam. In the book, in the Jewish say, because in the hi our history, no one ca uh, can say to other people, to other person, I am a better than you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because our fathers is one, mm -hmm. Adam. Mm -hmm. So I think, uh, you know, when we, we saw in the world, okay, uh, and people hit each other, uh, mm -hmm. you Muslim, you Christians sometimes, you uh, Jewish, and say, people, Listen, w the world begins in one person, Adam. If we respect each other, and if we give honor to each other, mm -hmm. so we can, be, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter if you Muslim and Christians, and brown and black and short and high. 
Okay, this is very important because th and uh, when I tried these books in, in in Jewish world in Jewish in state today, have a lot of people that come in from all the world, mm -hmm. Yemenized Jewish, Russian Jewish, Germany Jewish, Ethiopian Jewish, Moroccan Jewish, you know I Iran Jewish from all the world they come in. In each group have very uh, changed tradition. Uh, then the others, uh, okay, uh, the Moroccan traditions very different than the Germany tradition. It sounds like the same problem that, not problem, but Everywhere. opportunity, whatever, that we have in Canada with people coming from all over the world bringing different traditions. And w as you say, we need to figure out how to get along with one another. Are we going to be able to do that, do you think? Y of course. Okay. Of course, this, uh, because I, when I arrive to you, yeah. I travel, and uh, I have I saw China people, mm -hmm. and uh, even Ethiopian people here, mm -hmm. Ethiopian people, China, all the, from all the world. Yeah. So this is amazing, you know. This is the world. This is the uh, the world. If all the people, the same people, the world is not interesting. Yeah. That's you know, okay. it's not interesting because. If uh, uh, the world change, a lot of colors, okay? Yeah. And uh, uh, e even Muslim is good, Christian is good, uh, uh, Buddha is good, uh, Jewish, everything is good. But we first, first thing, we must give respect in other, each other, uh, uh, to others. Okay. This is uh, my <coughs> message here in, in, in your books. And also, you know, to open the world in the uh, for two Ethiopian Jewish community, they very very uh, special uh, groups that after two thousand of exile, they keep a lot of tradition of Jewish law, and now we return to Yerushalayim. Okay, fabulous! Great to have this conversation today, Rabbi. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to be speaking tonight at the uh, the house. Right? For young yeah. Jewish professionals? Yeah, of course. And you're going to be speaking about the book, about the law? Yeah, of course. And uh, also, uh, people might want to get their hands on the, the book. Now, is there a website or something where people can find out about the event tonight and yeah. find out about the book or maybe yeah, get, in, yeah. get in contact yeah. with you? Any plans to have the book published in English or any other languages? In the future, mm -hmm. we uh, because a lot of mm -hmm. people that they read only English want that I tra translate to English. Maybe in the future, I promise. I promise in the future, uh, uh, people can found it in uh, in English. Thank you. Okay, great. Well, listen, this has been great to have you here, Rabbi Sharon Shalom. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You and yeah. we've got, I just want to say that we've got some information. If people want to go to the event tonight, uh, they go to, um, well, I, I've got a, what is it? Just the house? The house. Okay. The, ho the house for young professionals. Oh, yeah. It's at, uh, what's the address? Anyway, I've got a phone number here. So if people want to find out, it's 416 482 9025. Right? And do you have a website? A website yeah. where people can get in touch with ah, you or, or, okay. or access the ah, book. Yeah, of course. What is your website? Uh, say, but is this in Hebrew? <laughs> oh, okay. Well, uh, well, we'll figure it out and put it Maybe in the Maybe people need to, uh, to read Hebrew. <laughs> <Maybe>. <laughs> okay, Rabbi. Thanks for doing this today. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank shalom, you so much. Shalom. 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 We're going to take a little break and come back uh, with uh, Christine DeVista right after this. And Liquid Lunch is continuing. We'll be right back.
Hi, I am Christina De Meester, founder of New, New Empowering Ways here in downtown Toronto. I teach, guide and coach women who are looking for ways to enjoy life more fully. I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching, small group workshops and summer retreats in Muskoka. I am a certified life coach with extensive training in relationship coaching. Most importantly, I live life to the fullest. And how do I do that? I turn challenges into opportunities. If you go through some challenges right now, you can contact me via my site at www.newempoweringways.com or send me an email at christina at newempoweringways.com. Again, I am right in downtown Toronto, and if you want, you can call me at 416-924-6087. Thank you. I'm gonna find it and tell you how I did and how I'm doing now. Tomorrow's another day. I'm gonna sit on my porch and scream out loud like I don't even care. If you've been running around singing the same damn song. Welcome back to the show. Uh, we've got uh, Christine Demeester here, and Christine, great to have you on the show here. You're Thank from you. a new or new empowering ways, right? Correct. So, Correct. Uh, and you're uh, an author because you've got the book, The Art, Mastering the Art of Success, and you've got a chapter in here. Is that right? That's correct. Okay, so you must have mastered the art of success yourself, right? I would say uh, partly at least, yes. Okay. <laughs> Well, um, let's talk about um, what you do in general at, at New, New Empowering Ways. Well, I am actually the founder and the owner of New Empowering Ways, which is a small company, but pays attention to small details and the bigger ones. And um, I do uh, coaching one-on-one, -on -one, personal life coaching. I'm a trained life coach, uh, personal life coach with extensive training in relationship coaching. and. Um, Many aspects of our lives are influenced by our relationships. Yeah. Um, and I, yes, I practice what I preach. Uh, Christine, did you have success in a particular field before you decided to become a life coach, or have you always been in the realm of life coaching? Without knowing it, uh, thank you for the question, mm -hmm. yes. Without knowing it, yes, I was, but I, wasn't, I didn't realize it. Mm -hmm. I was always very curious about life not only my own life, but other people's lives. I always enjoyed hearing other people's stories, mm -hmm. uh, their challenges, you know, how one can turn it around into opportunities. Mm -hmm. uh, I was, I, I'm a very people-oriented person. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I always see the glass half full. Yes. Three quarters full, and often totally full. I heard it's actually 100% full. It's just half full of water, and the other half is full of air. However you want to see it, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so when did you make the decision to uh, actually take this on as a career choice? Uh, yes, that, uh, that's a very good question because uh, it was actually after a move. I moved several times in my life. Mm -hmm. uh, I moved from Belgium to Canada, back to Belgium, from Belgium then to the States, and from the States back to Canada. And it was that last move to Canada because in the States I had a small company called Culture Relocation Counseling Services mm -hmm. for people who had moved and adapting them to the culture, right, mm. to the culture which I guess you had to do yourself. I right? had to do myself yeah. and uh, it appealed to me, you know, mm -hmm. so I started a small business uh, then, but I still had three kids at home, but then when I came to Toronto I only had one at home and two had already, you mm -hmm. know, were off at university. Mm -hmm. And I said, yes, I really like to work with women mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, who are uh, going through, you know, 
changes in their lives, not necessarily geographical changes, cultural relocation, but changes within themselves and wanting to make changes in their lives. And I came across life coaching, which I did not know at the time existed. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, I took the training, got certified, and then I added an additional training, Master in Transpersonal Psychology, mm -hmm. which goes very well together with the life coaching. One looks mm -hmm. at all the opportunities. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just, you know, mm -hmm. behavior or circumstances. It's much more than that. That's what transpersonal mm -hmm. psychology transpersonal is? Transpersonal psychology. So I have these two, you know, that work very well together. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you were observing your life, you were involved in your daily activities, you noticed that your interests lie in relationships and how things connected, and then you built on that to create this, this new path. Yes. It's yes. very interesting. Yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, really, one is always into creating, but mm -hmm. one is not always aware of it. So true. <laughs> and how to create, <laughs> right? So it does help if you have some keys, and that's what I do in my workshops, uh, especially on the summer retreats. Mm -hmm. uh, I put all the workshops together in one weekend yes. and I give enough free time in the afternoon that people can relax, swim, go hike, do whatever they choose to do, yes. you know, connect, journal, you know, um, meditate, hike, you know, to let it all sink in and they come away from the island, it's on an island, and they come away from the mm. island renewed. You know. That's such an important comment you just made. We're always creating whether or not we're conscious of it. So uh, it's better to know what we're creating. <laughs> Very much so, yes. Is yes. that true? Are we really creating? Yes, we are, All Hugh. The time. Yes. Yes. So are, uh, including you. <laughs> Get out of here. And if, you, if that scares you, Hugh, that name creator, you can call yourself a co-creator. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, now, you mentioned that you, uh, in particular, uh, are dealing with women or, or feel uh, compelled to want to help women. Is, do you deal with women exclusively in your no, practice? No, that is my focus and I do have a man who choose to come mm -hmm. or men who are taken by the hand by the woman to come and sit in a workshop, but uh, I do. I do have mm -hmm. men too and uh, the ones who do come are quite open and they do actually I had very good comments from mm -hmm. you know the first time I had man on the retreat I was surprised I had the nicest comments from man mm -hmm. <laughs> you know so uh, I'm very goal oriented and that goes very well with man man are mm -hmm. Yeah, very goal oriented. More goal oriented usually. We are more relational oriented, yes. right? And they're more goal oriented. Mm -hmm. So I kind of combine it because I figure, yeah, we want the goal, right? Mm -hmm. Goal really stands for going on to another level, mm -hmm. right? That's really what mm -hmm. goal is, right? That's a good acronym. Yes, yes, that's <laughs> the acronym, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, that's important. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we can be tempted to just sit there and be taken care of. Well, How do people find out about you? How do people know they need this kind of a service? It's li really mainly word of mouth. Mm -hmm. Word mm -hmm. of mouth. People mm -hmm. like who do come to the cottage, they're very happy, and the next mm -hmm. year they send a friend or they come again mm -hmm. with a friend or with a spouse or with mm -hmm. a child, but a daughter, or uh, then the, s the small workshops, the two hour interactive workshops, ha like I have one coming up in a couple of weeks, the power of your mind. Because mm -hmm. the mind is very important, right? Mm -hmm. The mind, uh, we are bigger than the mind, but very often we are ruled by the mind, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's knowing, you know, um, exactly. how to use your mind. It can make you or break you. Again, it's our choice. Was your writing the book a way of making the workshop, uh, let's say, portable and more ac accessible to all? Is it a, re a replacement for the workshop? It is uh, not exactly a replacement. I was invited to uh, join. This is, it's mm -hmm. a collection of 21 interviews with mm -hmm. people like Jack Canfield and Liz Brown oh. and Victor Hansen. Okay. And then mm -hmm. uh, the majority of the contributors are people like me who are not okay. so well known but have something to say. Okay. And uh, um, yes, it's on my maiden name. Is that you? Name. Yes, okay. but it's on my maiden name, by the way. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I use my maiden name. And well, uh, they put your picture on the cover, yeah. even if there's 21 uh, chapters. Now some come out with my picture, and others come out with other co-authors. Cool okay. cool, uh, uh, all right. And Very I democratic. Yes, and I basically I thought, yes, some people have bought it. It only came out in uh, December last year, mm -hmm. so it's like fresh on the market. Mm -hmm. And um, some people have gotten it who took my workshop already mm -hmm. and said it's a good reminder. Mm -hmm. You know, and I figure one day if I do something else, at least it's always there. There you mm -hmm. go. Wh what's the uh, what's your chapter about? 
live like life to its fullest. Yeah. Living how do you life. how do you do that? What do you mean by that? Well, the <laughs> first topic now that comes into my mind is living <laughs> in the moment. I would just yeah. <laughs> be in the moment. Be 100% where you are. Stop worrying about the future. Stop yeah. regretting the past. If only I knew I would have done that. That's a minute away from the moment. Mm -hmm. Right? And if you live fully in the moment, when the future comes and becomes the moment, you will live it fully. Mm -hmm. That's one topic. Are you living this moment to the fullest, I'm Christine? really living now, right in front of both of you. <laughs> I'm here 100%. <laughs> I'm not worrying about anything, and I'm not regretting anything at this time. I'm, I'm here. Okay. Let me ask you a question, because uh, as you mentioned, you discovered that this, uh, being a coach, was a career option. Um, and, uh, you know, I remember a time when I'd never heard of a coach, and I'm sure there was a time not too long ago when there was no such thing as a formal professional life, life coach. coach, right? They were, they were sports coaches though. Right, <laughs> sports coaches, but to take that and, and just apply it to life, life in general yeah. is a relatively new phenomenon. Yeah. And you, uh, your concentration is really dealing with women and especially women who are going through a lot of changes. Mm -hmm. And it seems that the way that the world is going that, you know, uh, there is a lot of change happening and mm -hmm. a lot of people are going through so much you know, our lives today are just relentless in, in terms of changing all the time. Mm -hmm. Compare that to a life 50 years ago mm -hmm. where the pace mm -hmm. of change was so much slower. Mm -hmm. Is that, um, why is this happening? Why are we being confronted with so much change these days, do you think? Well, we're part of the change, right? We're part of it. But the world consists of mm -hmm. Many hues, many, I'm sorry, I Rose. roses, you know, and many Christinas, and we're part of it. And it's just everything seems to go faster. Yeah. It seems, right? But we don't have to. We can mm -hmm. have our own pace. If we, we don't need to be a victim of the changes. We can be, actually, we can thrive in it, mm -hmm. you know, and just pick what appeals to us. You mm -hmm. know, like for me, it can be totally different than for you. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, you know, uh, being a ride in downtown Toronto is my life. I love it. Mm -hmm. Am I going to judge somebody who decides to live in the country? Mm -hmm. No, it might be, you know, everybody has to follow their own heart and soul mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. live totally out of there. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and it's possible. And it might look like I think the more people there are, the more changes there will be, because we all have different ambitions in our lives. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't have to have your ambition, and mm -hmm. um, you don't have to have mine. Mm -hmm. and so boundaries is one of the things too. You know, you allow, you set boundaries mm -hmm. to, uh, to whatever is not feeding you. Mm -hmm. You need to learn how to say no. And I give actually a full day boundaries workshop, because I think that's one of the most important things. To you live a happy life, knowing when to say no, how to say it, that you don't feel guilty afterwards, mm -hmm. and that it's enriching you instead of impoverishing you. Mm -hmm. And you said it needs to be, we need to realize what's feeding us and what isn't yes. feeding us, right? What, mm -hmm. What's good for us, what isn't good for us. Do you find that some people have difficulty even deciding, even sure. being able to identify what is feeding them and but what isn't? Sure, because first you get to know yourself, right? You yeah. have to know yourself, because how can you know what will feed you if you don't know yourself? Mm -hmm. Are you an introvert? Are you an extrovert? Do you need people? Do you want so much time on your own? Do you want to spend more time with, you know, it mm -hmm. depends. Like, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's not that an introvert is better than an extrovert. It's just more you. Mm -hmm. Because one of the keys is to being authentic. Mm -hmm. Be you. Be a first version of who you are mm -hmm. instead of a second or a third version of somebody else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, be yourself. Mm -hmm. But to be yourself, you've got to know yourself. Exactly, yeah. So you've got a chapter in this book, Mastering the Art of Success. Do you have any other uh, writing or plans to uh, do more? I uh, actually know that's pure coincidence. I don't have any plans. Many people told me you need to write a book, but I find if things are really black and white, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. life is out of it, you know, change that's is super. True. Mm -hmm. Right, because what we believe very strongly today, we might not believe next week anymore. Mm -hmm. We might change, right? So yeah. your book might be obsolete as soon as you print it. Uh, exactly, mm -hmm. and and what I what I it was an interview, mm -hmm. you know. So mm -hmm. a bit of my own background, mm -hmm. things you know what I believe in now, and I do because I practice it for over 15 years now. Mm -hmm. 
my keys, you know, attitude of gratitude, being grateful mm -hmm. for what we have instead mm -hmm. of always aiming on something we don't have, trying mm -hmm. to get more, mm -hmm. you know, and that more could be too much, yes. right? Mm -hmm. It's more responsibility, right? If you own three homes, you are responsible for three homes. If you have five kids, you're responsible for five kids until they grow up, <laughs> you know, until they are their own, that, mm -hmm. you know. So being grateful for what we have is a big thing, mm -hmm. you know, and, and focusing on what we have and staying away from the attitude of greed, because mm -hmm. if you always focus on what you wished you had, you know. I think we're seeing what that kind of an attitude has uh, led to in the general economy. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly, you know, and yeah, and if yeah. you're grateful for what you have, you will attract more stuff that you're grateful for. Yes. Because we know enough now with the law of attraction, mm -hmm. it's not mm -hmm. a mystery anymore, mm -hmm. right? Like, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you get more of what you focus on. Do you find that people in general are becoming more aware and uh, you know, in, in your business even, do you find that the types of conversations you're able to have with people, uh, uh, they run deeper more quickly than in the past because of a general, Very yes? Very true, and the, the younger generation for sure. Mm. That's, that's good to know. Very good to know. They yes. ask questions that I didn't ask until I was 40. Mm -hmm. And that's they start asking the question in their late 20s. Yeah. You know. What does that mean? I mean, what do you think that means for, you know, society in general? The fact that the younger generation, thing. yeah. I think it's a good thing because they put their priorities uh, differently from uh, the older generation. You know, like uh, it seemed to me in the past, it was all about money, 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 getting stuff, stuff, stuff. And now it's more about freedom, mm -hmm. do what you want to do, when you want to do it, how you want to do it. You know, and not being told what to do, when and where and mm -hmm. how, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's me, of course. You know, some people like the security, right? Mm -hmm. and, and they want a job from nine to five and knowing mm -hmm. that they will have a pension, you know. And, and Does that still exist? <laughs> a kind of yeah. security? <laughs> yeah, less and less, you yeah. know. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, but my core value is freedom. So mm -hmm. I, I, I appreciate that enormously. Mm -hmm. I would give up anything mm -hmm. for freedom, but some people would give up anything for security. Mm -hmm. I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you're right, everybody's different. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Now, Christine, so you've got this retreat in the summer, and yes. can anybody sign up for that? Yes, yes, yes. In July, I have a women's only. Okay. Mm -hmm. And in August, I have a co-ed. You know, All right. the women can bring and the men can come on their own, and I have two places. I have the main cottage, which can lodge six, and I have uh, the bunk house, which can lodge four to six. But that would some, sometimes it's like a whole family that takes it, mm -hmm. or sometimes it's a group of friends, or sometimes they don't know each other and they get to know each other. Mm -hmm. But that's usually, you know, uh, so far it was always a group of women, like mm -hmm. friends, you know. And you mentioned you're also doing a, a, a speaking in a couple of weeks, or doing oh, an I event, do a what is that, a workshop? A workshop, a workshop. Uh, The Power of Your Mind, that's, I believe it's the 20th, but I'm not sure, but uh, it's all on my website. Which we're gonna give out in a minute. And uh, do you have any other uh, events uh, coming up? Well, that you believe it or not, about? but I, uh, uh, actually a client of mine organized a uh, meet up uh, 10 times a year, you yeah. know, during, uh, not during the summer because I'm up north in the summer, we meet and we uh, choose a topic for discussion. And uh, the last month was um, putting a, a plan into an action and this mm -hmm. time it is not only an action, but stop procrastinating type of thing. Sometimes people have a plan mm -hmm. and it's okay, or a goal, and it's okay for two, three weeks and then they forget mm -hmm. about it. So that's, our, that's this Saturday actually. And it's called um, uh, Enrich and Empower. So we're always uh, discussing a topic that is enriching and empowering. Mm -hmm. And it's dedicated to women. That's only women, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> but the workshops are open to men and women. And uh, quite often we do have uh, men who are really tired of being, you know, on the rat race, you know, right. who, who are starting to open up and yeah. see more in life than just that goal, you know. <laughs> and also, I take it you're open to if somebody's watching this right now and, and maybe they feel they need a coach or somebody to work on a one-on-one. Sure, one -on -one. One -on -one. Yes, I do have one-on-one -on -one coaching clients. Yeah. You know. So what's the first step if they want to get in touch with you for, uh, for something like they that? They can email me, me Christina, at newempoweringways.com and Christina with a C-H. 
Mm -hmm. But if they Google New Empowering Base.com, I'm s uh, I will come up Toronto. Mm -hmm. I mean. Okay, and I guess they can go to your website as well and yes. get all that information, all find information. out about your events as they come up. Yes, and that as sort they of come thing? up. Yes, yes. So uh, and and so what's NewEmpoweringWays.com? Yes, is that it? That's it. Okay. So where is the retreat held? In Muskoka. Muskoka. But okay. uh, just north of Bracebridge, right. south of the, of, uh, the village of Rosso, and mm. you're on an island in the oh. cleanest and clearest lake of the Muskoka. It's called Skeleton Lake. I know that lake. You know it? I've been on. Is, do you have big cliffs on your island? Uh, I don't know the name, but the camp, right? But you know that island with the big cliffs? Yes, yes. I used yes, to jump yes. off those cliffs. Oh, our kids used to do yeah. the same thing, and I have been debating for a big birthday maybe I need to do that that is so much fun <laughs> jumping off those cliffs <laughs> <laughs> I jumped off a cliff in uh, Algonquin Park once a 50-foot cliff yeah. yeah these ones might be that high too <laughs> I don't think I'd do it again I did it when I was a lot younger <laughs> I was screaming all the way down yeah, I yeah, yeah, yeah. but it was fun I'm there for two months so it's good for me to have two weekends I think that sounds like it's yeah. really good for mm, you yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. well Christine it's been great to have you on the show and thank, uh, you. thank you for uh, bringing the book in. And again, people can find out all that information at newempoweringways.com. Yes, right? and it's posted on my homepage, the book. Yeah. You know, and they can actually order it. Or if they live in Toronto, they can pick it up and save the postage. Fabulous. Mm -hmm. Okay, Christina, thanks thank a lot you. for doing this. Thank you. We're going to just take a little break right now, and then we're going to come back uh, with uh, Dr. Kareem and Pierre Paolo. And uh, we are going to have a fascinating conversation as Liquid Lunch continues. We'll be right back. I can go Thank you. I know. So don't tell me I'm wrong. Because I'm right. And I'm so right. I'm not wrong. I'm not wrong. Don't leave me alone. Hear what I say Before you go away I always thought it would end But it'll never end What you're doing and just listen to the sound, to the beat, and to the rhythm. To the rhythm. Got it all figured out this time around I know What you doing? Just listen. A to the sound, to the beat, to the rhythm. A to the rhythm. Cause I'm right. I'm not wrong. I'm not wrong. Don't tell me I'm wrong. Don't tell me I'm wrong. Don't tell me I'm wrong. No. Don't tell me I'm wrong, no. Don't tell me
It's a long year, a long year. The days are getting so long, and nobody seems to care, and nobody seems to mind at all. And I don't see a reason. About the season, the sun seems to shine through them all. Shine through them all. Take a break. I take it all in. Realize that nobody gives a damn about what you do. About what you wear.
All right, we're back here on the show, and we're really excited. We have uh, Dr. Ibrahim Karim here, and uh, Pierre Paolo, uh, Dr. Karim, of course, the architect from Egypt. And scientist. And scientist. And founder of a brand new revolutionary science. Yeah, but just call me Ibrahim, huh? Ib <laughs> right. And uh, author of the book. The book is called? Back to a Future for Mankind. Yeah. And it's available on Amazon and as well at the Total Health Show this upcoming weekend, where uh, Ibrahim will also be talking. Yeah. And uh, we'll have a booth in conjunction with the Toronto Dowsers. It's fabulous. It's fabulous that uh, you're here uh, today, Dr. Karim. And also uh, Pierre Paolo, the architect. Uh, now, Pierre, I understand you uh, designed that house. That, that house. That <laughs> house <laughs> right here. That's and yeah. this house is, uh, a fa uh, this is like, it's unbelievable what this is, but designed according to the, pr correct me if I'm up? wrong, but designed according to the principles of biogeometry. No, it's, the, it's the first house in North America that yeah. has been built like that from the ground up. Right. With the consultant consulting of Dr. Karim. That's how we met, that's how we started, and now oh. we're flying. Okay, now I understand and, uh, that just because of the design, the architecture, the, the geometry of the house, that it even does that's things like cleans the stream that flows absolutely. around the house? Oh, there are stories we can tell you about it. Well, okay, because I mean, that's enough. That, that was what, me. when I heard that, I thought, okay, we need to know more about this yes. biogeometry stuff yeah. and Dr. Cream, um, maybe you could give people a little bit of an introduction to this people that have maybe never heard of this before. Okay. Well to start with just call me Abraham. Okay? I, I, yeah, I will. Okay now I mean if we look at, at our civilization for the past uh, let's say 200 years it's all about connecting with the electromagnetic radiation we want to bring it into every home, into every activity, right. because without it, we, we don't have the information age. Yeah. But that's only 200 years. If we go for, let's say, 10,000 years before that, it was not about distributing electromagnetic radiation. It was about distributing a balancing energy quality found in sacred power spots of the Earth. And from the first men here, the large stone that they put there on sacred power spots, to the city planning afterwards, mm -hmm. where they used to put their temples on sacred power spots, and then uh, the courthouse, and then the market, and then connect them with avenues. Mm -hmm. It was all about distributing this uh, balancing light into every activity of humanity. That mm -hmm. went 
for all the great civilizations that was the main goal i mean that is the main criteria of architecture mm -hmm. and somehow 200 years ago we went more into the material and this thing just fell out like did we forget about that did was that science or that art of of that b balancing design was that something that was lost and and why wasn't it passed on well it it was part of every architecture of every great civilization somehow our mindset went into the material and forgot uh, about let's say the subtle it's just like the same thing uh, 200 years ago at the same period we lost our connection to the subconscious see now how did that happen yeah I mean when Freud first came and tried to open back the door of the subconscious you know it was an area that you feared you know he, he'd open a small door and then there was this sexual uh, libido and all that and then open it again and look and there was this death thing you know yeah and uh, so, so w there was a fear of looking at the subconscious level but if we don't get all the invisible dimensions back into play, we will not achieve uh, harmony because that is the only way we can harmonize and balance electromagnetic radiation. So we should know that we have a hidden time bomb in our civilization. This hidden time bomb is electromagnetic radiation. You use electromagnetic radiation for example microwaves to mm -hmm. heat water mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you're not aware that they can uh, play a role in global warming mm -hmm. <laughs> when they're there mm -hmm. they move molecules so they, they play a role in uh, global warming so how will we wait till this hidden time bomb explodes one day we reach a threshold where all immunity systems of life will just collapse yeah. now mm -hmm. if we bring this balancing light that was there for the past 10,000 years that every ancient civilization knew if we bring this quality into our electromagnetic radiation we transform that and we are distributing uh, balancing harmonizing energy like the ancients again instead of destroying life on, on earth okay. so th that's the main path of that's the mission that we have uh, clothed in solutions to everyday problems. Okay, that's fantastic. Now, is it true you're living in Montreal yes, these I'm days? Yes, I'm living in Montreal, yes. Okay, and uh, I understand there may be some plans to uh, to kind of uh, use biogeometry to to fix Montreal well, from a I'm point of view. I'm planning to start that in July. There's a, I'm speaking at the conference there. Uh, the theme is the role of saints and sages in the spiritual evolution <coughs> of humanity. Mm. So my talk will be the role of sacred power spots in the evolution of humanity. And there I'm going to promote the idea of connecting with the power spots of the area and then uh, showing them how to energize them, how to connect them and how to bring their energy into all energies. Uh, that exists today uh, of modern technology and then we could actually change the whole psychology uh, and health of the people uh, of the area. So it's going to change the mindsets That's the of first the people thing that too. Happens. You know there's one thing that people are not aware of that the biggest negative effect of electromagnetic uh, radiation before it affects your body functions the biggest effect is on your psychological makeup and okay. your mental makeup. And this is where also you have th the biggest positive effects when you apply by geometry. Mm -hmm. So th this is our main uh, thing that we want to do. We did it in Switzerland, in some areas of Switzerland, and we hope to start doing it in Canada. Uh, do we? Can we take a couple of minutes for me to tell you my personal experience with biogeometry? Yes. Thank you. I'm I'm uh, thrilled to be able to tell you personally. Actually, uh, ten years ago, I was very seriously injured in a car accident. Multiple injuries. Uh, you know, head injury, uh, musculoskeletal system, and uh, healing was just happening very very slowly four years of traditional uh, western style physiotherapy didn't do very much and over the years I seem to develop 
more symptoms and they were worsening instead of getting better. Certain systems were getting, uh, symptoms were getting better, but others were being added to the mix. I couldn't think clearly at all. I had brain fog. I had what was called chronic fatigue, um, chemical sensitivities. Uh, my whole immune system was collapsing, really, and I tried everything. And I didn't know what was wrong. And whenever I uh, explained to my healthcare practitioners what was happening, they just said that it was because my injuries had been so severe and it was a domino effect. I didn't know what to do. I couldn't work. Uh, all this time I haven't been working. So two years ago, I had the opportunity to leave my environment for three months. And I spent, the, I spent it in the country visiting sacred sites actually, so, so not only was I out of Toronto, but I was also on sites uh, that carried a very special energy. And in those three months, I became a completely different person. And I came back and I, I realized then that, it, well, I came back uh, totally convinced that I was better and able to start work. And with two weeks of being within Toronto, again, I had like a collapse. And then I realized it was environmental. And I began working with something called radionics. I was tested on a Vega machine to be totally radioactive, which surprised me because I don't use a cell phone and I didn't even have a TV. And so I never thought that these things were affecting me. Uh, I then realized that I had to learn how to deal with this because how are we supposed to live in this world? that is permeated by electromagnetic radiation. So that's what led me to biogeometry initially, and uh, I'm so grateful for you to have invented that. Pier Paolo Alberghini uh, came over and uh, balanced my living environment because I was so weakened I couldn't even douse. And ever since that time, my, my health is just increasing in leaps and bounds, and so I'm just so grateful to you for having invented this, uh, this science and also the way the courses are taught that we are empowered to, uh, to learn to balance our own environments and the fact that you encourage the learning of the principles and that we can apply our own creativity and taking them further as well. Uh, I think it's uh, nothing short of revolutionary and amazing. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I'd like to add something. Uh, that told, just told me before coming in about this creativity in biogeometry. She did something that I really liked. <laughs> I had been teaching them uh, in Asheville last November on how to connect uh, earth energy centers or our buildings with sacred locations in the sky, how to find those sacred locations and how to connect the buildings to them. Now, I was te teaching it from uh, an architectural point of view uh, mm -hmm. or earth point of view location and building and what she did was really creative she connected the centers of her body the chakras she actually connected them with sacred locations in the sky like we connect the ancient temples so her body is permanently connected to those locations she and did that to me too I actually connected yeah, but yeah, that, okay. was, that was my <laughs> you know, I tell you something I I've been teaching by geometry for, I don't know, maybe 40 years or something. <laughs> and every time I hear about something like this, for me, I mean, it's really fascinating the things you come up with, uh, those creative oh, ideas. Good. Yes. Oh, th that's the thing about the science. When you're learning it, you really feel yeah. like you can run with it. And it's the way that you've presented it. Uh, to the public, the way that it's being taught, that uh, allow encourages us. So yeah, and and I could feel the shift. By the way, I could feel the shift, and yeah. it's still there. Yeah, and then I connected Hugh's heart to a sacred uh, spot on the sky as well. And I felt the shift. I don't know if you did. Well, I felt the energy shift. You know, I, I, well, I think some people are more sensitive to this kind of thing than mm -hmm. other people. Some people obviously more sensitive to EMF. Well, radiation in, in general, other people. ladies are more sensitive than men <laughs> as a general rule. Right. Yeah. And I'm very insensitive no, as well, a general well, rule. Well, well, no, I mean, as a general, I mean... <laughs> no, you're not. Yes. No, no, ma maybe uh, if you found myself, <coughs> you would be uh, less sensitive th than a lady who practices the same thing. They're much, much more uh, right. sensitive. We 
could be much more uh, stronger emitters. Right, mm -hmm. but I think yeah. th the point you're making too is that we as a culture, as a society, with all yeah. the electromagnetic ma radiation, yeah. we are facing a time bomb and more and more people are yeah. hitting the hitting the wall in terms of their Absolutely. ability to handle yeah. the amount of EMF mm -hmm. that's, that's around, yes. right? Absolutely. Um, and the symptoms are vague. See, in my case, I had all the symptoms, but they're so vague, you chalk them up to something else. Mm -hmm. You know, you think, well, I'm stressed out, or in my case, I had this injury, uh, but it's all around well, because us. Because you're born into them. You're yeah. born in an electromagnetic environment, so you, you, you it seems like normal that everybody has them. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. We have so many uh, questions. I, I just want to ask you a, a little bit, um, because, well, uh, first of all, where did you, like, where did you get, how did you invent this, Ibrahim, or, or did you, were you drawing on uh, earlier uh, sources, or where does it come from? What's the origins oh. of bio okay, biogeometry? There is, the worldview is very similar to ancient Egypt, but you cannot go and learn energy secrets from ancient civilizations if you haven't discovered them today. Like, when we uh, discovered how to make brain surgery today, then we understood the reliefs that were showing surgeons doing brain surgery 5,000 years ago in Egypt. I see, okay. But if you didn't do it today, you'd never understand what they were doing. Right. So the same thing with what I did. Started from engineering, architecture, and all that, and I was teaching for so many years teaching history of architecture to, to our students. I'm a professor of architecture. And we teach basically on sacred buildings, the evolution mm -hmm. of the styles of sacred buildings. But those sacred buildings are on sacred power spots. Mm -hmm. And then if you go to sacred power spots, you'll find in the same power spot, you dig under the building, mm -hmm. maybe 10 meters, there's another building from an earlier civilization, and then you dig more and more. And we have an area in Egypt in the temple of uh, Luxor you find the ancient Egyptian temple, and then inside it, mm -hmm. a church, and inside it, a mosque built mm -hmm. on the same power spot. Mm -hmm. So it comes uh, to, well, is the area more important or the building? Why are we teaching the building all the time? It must be something else. Mm -hmm. Then you start seeing at the dawn of humanity, they used to bring the 30, 40 ton stones mm -hmm. of granite. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they, they used to drag them on sledges for maybe 200 miles and erect them on those power spots. So it came to me the idea, why don't we start looking at the energy mm -hmm. there and not the material? Mm -hmm. And then we understood that in those areas you had underground rivers mm -hmm. and earth currents crossing at certain angles. Mm -hmm. Certain angles would give you sacred power spots. Mm -hmm. Other angles would give you cancerous spots. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So here, angles, are the components of shape, and that means they are right in my domain as an architect. So I took it as my mission to develop a physics of quality. That means a physics that studies the effect of everything on the human energy system. Mm -hmm. And from this physics of quality to develop a design language that would recreate the energy of sacred power spots through design. So you, you didn't have to go and build on a sacred power spot if you're building a home. You could create one right where you are. That's a great segue, I think, to uh, ask Pier Paolo about your experience designing this house in Mississauga. And can you maybe tell the story uh, of, of how this house came to be built, I'll how be you to. came to be involved? Yes. Um, first of all, um, I'm an architect from Florence from 44 years now. And um, I have always searched for finding a way of building buildings that will bless people. It's bless just people. Bless people yeah. so that they will enter into it and they will be transformed. Mm -hmm. And uh, having classical uh, upbringing and so on from Florence, uh, there was always the beauty that was um, inspiring me. But until I met Ibrahim eight years ago, I didn't know how to, to do what the, un the ancients do did. Mm -hmm. Once I started learning about him, taking all the courses, and then eventually this house came about. Um, the client asked me uh, to, to do this house, and um, 
the client actually, the, the owner, uh, was very sick. Mm. He had Parkinson. And I said, well, I have a solution for you if you come along and we hire as a consultant, Dr. Karim, we would have a house that will heal you eventually. And uh, his brief words were, I cannot not afford to carry him, to, to bring him on board. Mm -hmm. And there had started the adventure, let's say, of building this house. Um, there is a story that I would like to share with you which shows you and answers you. The first question you came in, can this change the river, the, the polluted river that passes right underneath the house? So um, there was a house on these two lots uh, built by an architect before. And when uh, Ibrahim came for the first time on the site, I had already done the plants, the floor plants of the house, and we placed them on a, um, on a horizontal um, floor there um, in the direction of how it would be built. Mm -hmm. And we started measuring. So we measure, um, mainly I was learning at that time, so we both measured um, the site and there was EMF coming from across the valley, pollution from the river, and um, um, we started talking about what can we do to change this pollution. So Ibrahim took a look at the plants and the plants, the, the house is mainly a U-shape with an entrance courtyard and you can see it there if you want. Uh, no, uh, uh, Pierre, yeah. why don't you just take that with you over there and, and yeah. hold it up okay. to the camera, what right. you want to show. Um, so, uh, this is the, the entrance courtyard. And um, mm -hmm. the, um, there was on, on the side, actually, I can show what was the key here. This is. Hold it up a little, little bit. A little higher if you could. Um, yeah. This yeah, is a deck. Yeah. Yeah. There you go, yeah. Um, that is protruding from the house. That's the only part and has a beautiful view of the river and the valley. Yeah. And was sticking out of this U shape and was the, the form was octagonal. So Ibrahim, take a look at the, o the octagon, changes the line maybe three feet long in, a, in a one direction and says, okay, measure it again. We measure, and everything changed. The frequency of this, this space was good. The, the river wasn't polluting anymore. We had no more smell. There was also something else. He said, um, are you noticing something different? I said, yes, there is a perfume in the air. Mm. There was a lilac tree, right? beside us and all of a sudden it started sending this perfume in mm -hmm. the air that was unreal. Mm -hmm. Wow. What's going on? So I said, okay, let's try this again. Erase, he did it in the pencil, erase that line, little line, and immediately the smell from the river came back, no more perfume from the tree. And um, EMF from across the site. So by this time, the landscape architect, uh, James Thompson, comes along and says, okay, let's try with him. So we put back the line, and again, the whole thing Seems stayed again. See, that's amazing. It was the, the response of nature, mm -hmm. because once you have traced and you have put it, the, the plants, even if it's two-dimensional, on a site, the site knows that this is going to be built and nature immediately responds to it. So this is how we have learned, and I have learned from Ibrahim, how to build according to earth. And from that point, the house grew from earth with all the shapes, proportions, and so on, so that now it affects five kilometer radius wow. of nature 
EMF, the client, the owner of the house, has three other houses in Norway, in Florida, and in New York. And he used to go one month in each one of them along the year. Now he goes with his wife in these houses, leaves her there, and comes back <laughs> home after a week. He says, I'm going back to my home because I feel so much better. Mm -hmm. That's briefly the story. There is more stories, but okay. this is no, there's condensed. One you, he took a picture oh, yes. of the owner of the house. Yeah. She came in while we were testing with this line and the smell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we erased the line, and he took a picture of her face. Mm -hmm. And then we put the line, and he put the second picture of her face. And then within minutes apart, then next day he printed the two pictures and took the two pictures to her. And she told him, oh, Pierre Paul, you can't trick me. You photoshopped that one. Oh. That's funny. <laughs> wow. You know, so we're talking about alchemy here. <laughs> well, you know, I, I'm almost wondering as if, you know, people who, um, well, uh, me, for example, if I go into a restaurant, you know, I will only, I will feel better sitting in certain places. Yeah. Or if I walk into a room, I'm going to feel, you know, I can, how good do I feel in this room versus just walking into a different room, I'll feel a certain way. Is this really why we feel the differently in different rooms? Is it partly course, related yes. to the shape yes, that shapes. those rooms of course, have? Yes. And is it related to the feng shui, the feng shui, uh, the, the Chinese? Uh, yeah. Well, in a way, you see the difference between uh, feng shui, sacred geometry, uh, or Indian vasto, and by geometry is that uh, the others are traditions, ancient traditions. And as ancient traditions, they didn't have those man-made energies that we have today. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Biogeometry is a new mm -hmm. physics of mm -hmm. quality. Mm -hmm. And in that way, it can deal with waves, with microwaves. It, it deals with the actual physics <coughs> of those man-made energies. Yes. And uh, so it, it's, uh, in a way, it's totally different. Yeah. It's, it's more scientific in many ways. It's and a support to all the others. Yeah. Yes. And I love the way that it transmutes those harmful or those non-beneficial energies. It doesn't neutralize them or push them away. It actually transmutes them. It is a form of alchemy, really. Yeah, it puts a, a harmonizing quality on them. So they carry that harmonizing quality in your body. Yes. Uh, so whatever disturbance they bring is harmonized by the quality they carry. Yes. Okay. We don't have a lot of time. I want to ask some more questions here. Please do. So <laughs> speaking of transmuting harmful energy, yes. I'd like to ask you about, um, uh, you know, we're hearing horror stories, of course, from the Fukushima disaster that is yes. still putting radiation into all over the Northern Hemisphere. Is, does biogeometry offer the hope of being able to transmute that kind of really harmful ionizing radiation? Yes, well, we don't transmute the radiation. We can actually put on it this <coughs> balancing quality. Mm -hmm. And while we were uh, uh, in Asheville last November, I showed them slides that we had done with radioactive materials. And they were done at the National Research Center in Egypt with mice. Mm -hmm. And we showed how uh, tissues of the mice in front of the radioactive materials were completely damaged. And with some biogeometry solutions, they fared completely like normal mice. So we could offer 100% protection in uh, the materials we tested were uh, radioactive building materials. Mm -hmm. We didn't test it in Japan or something like that, but with radioactive building materials. But today, you know, all around the world, you have this depleted uranium, this secondary radioactivity and all that. That level we can definitely protect from. But if you stand in the middle of a, an atomic bomb, <laughs> that we can't help you there. Okay. <laughs> but so I would yeah. think, though, is there anything you can do for these uh, poor workers that are trying to work on the Fukushima plant? Definitely. Something that can help them or the people that even live nearby? Definitely we can do that. The, the thing is, our solutions and the results they make uh, are so out of the ordinary that our biggest problem is not to actually provide the solution. Right. No, th the biggest problem is to convince the people that we can give the solution. Sometimes even after we give the solution and people see the results, mm -hmm. the results are there, but people still <laughs> are in disbelief, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's our, our main uh, uh, problem is how to bring the people to believe 
in a new science. But every age that had a scientific revolution, that had new sciences, uh, you had the same problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think somebody said once, science progresses one funeral at a time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got the yeah. 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 I uh, hope it's not my <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, I, okay. So uh, let me ask you then about, because you're talking about power spots yeah. earlier, and I've heard, I've, I'm just watching some uh, material about, of course, Egypt has the great uh, pyramid. Pyramids, yeah. Uh, there are other pyramids in Central America, yes. in uh, Cambodia, um, all over the world. Yes. Now, are these power spots? What was the purpose of those pyramids to be built originally? Look, if you take uh, the history of humanity, a power spot was the sacred area around which a community gathered where they buried their dead where there were special waters that had healing powers, and uh, where they did certain rituals. Uh, so it was something ingrained into the, the psychic makeup of humanity that they always related to a power spot. And those power spots had another thing. They were like doorways. Mm -hmm. Doorways from our dimension to other dimensions. So you could have angelic manifestations, you could have oracles, you could have things like that. So humanity was really attached to those power spots. From the first humanity till today, this attachment was in two forms, either a man here, that means a huge stone, or what we call a dolmen. You have from those here in Canada wh where you have two huge stones and one horizontal one above them forming like a gate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The strange thing, is that they are all oriented to the range between east and southeast everywhere in the world. And that's uh, where they become most potent. Then on those, they were put in the sacred power spots. Then ancient mounds were done on them. You found in Europe, especially in England, many of the mounds that you have there with castles on them or churches up there Today they discovered that they were man-made. It was originally a dolmen, one of those dolmens, mm -hmm. and actually in the beginning maybe just earth on it. Later on, mud bricks and a whole hill was built on it. Later on, with civilization that started using proportion, mathematics, and all that, this mound became a pyramid, and the dolmen is still the chamber inside the pyramid. Mm -hmm. So it's humanity's way of dealing with uh, the power spots. But the strange thing is, it is the same way all around the world. Mm -hmm. Somehow, the, the men here, the dolmen, the mount, how it became a pyramid, mm -hmm. wherever you go, anywhere around the world, it's the same. And yet, it seems we have uh, collectively forgotten the, those origins. Unfortunately. Mm -hmm. yes. And that is the reason why we have so many uh, psychological disturbances today because uh, of lack of this connection to the earth because sacred power spots are our connection to the earth mm -hmm. now this is something that you are talking about uh, addressing on on citywide levels yes right you're talking about doing it in Montreal yes perhaps doing it in Toronto as mm -hmm. well can you talk a little bit about what that involves and the kinds of effects that that it will have well in ancient times, anyhow, if you go to any of the ancient churches you have here, you'll find that the people already put them on power spots. But what we are going to do is find out where those power spots are and then start educating the people, bringing their awareness to those power spots so that mm -hmm. they can identify the history of the power spots, mm -hmm. uh, who were the people who lived around the power mm -hmm. spot, the rituals around those power spots. And then we can use now uh, by geometrical shapes. In biogeometry, what we do, we take that energy that we have in power spots, but we amplify it about a million times for our use. Like with electricity, you have it in a natural way, very minute electricity, but then you amplify it to use it. So we amplify it and then make virtual connections. Mm -hmm. If we were building a new city, we would make those connections actually in the planning of the city itself. But since the city already exists, so we can make virtual connections with geometrical shapes until we make a grid, mm -hmm. a whole grid 
of spiritual energy covering all of the city and all the sacred power spots and then at a special moment we start connecting some of those sacred power spots to certain locations in the sky sacred locations up there so we create a 3d grid mm -hmm. once the 3d grid is in place so i mean this grid will infuse every other energy aspect in the city with this energy quality so it's as if the city is in constant prayer and in constant healing mm -hmm. it will really change everything and to also protect the uh, inhabitants of any city from any other kind of uh, attacks that could be done with uh, you know the people are developing all kinds of modern weapons trying to make uh, vibrational attacks and things like that such a grid will completely uh, protect the inhabitants of city from any uh, mm -hmm. anybody trying to harm them or anything like so that. it's even better than star wars <laughs> it's in a way it is in a way it is because it's start it, peace it, it's <laughs> yeah. no, because it's anchoring you anchoring you spiritually to the mm -hmm. earth yeah and this is a very important thing the spiritual anchor Ibrahim is very important sorry how long would such a project take to complete uh if there were no uh material obstacles or you know if everybody was on was on side uh how long would such a no, technically yes technically it would take a very short time oh. but the idea about such a project mm -hmm. is to have as many people involved to bring the awareness, mm -hmm. to bring the, uh, the stories about uh, all those sacred power sites, the rituals recorded with them. So it's an ongoing activity, actually. Yeah. So the physical solution might take, let's say, a couple of months mm -hmm. uh, to install. But the actual uh, education mm -hmm. of the whole thing, mm -hmm. uh, bringing it into the hearts of everybody, mm -hmm. this takes a longer time. But a very important point to understand here is that we are like a microcosm you know your mm -hmm. energy centers mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. and the energy centers of the area where you are born mm -hmm. uh, in the region they are in resonance mm -hmm. so it's like the the little pattern that's mm -hmm. in connection with the big pattern mm -hmm. now if you neglect the big pattern and if you allow the big pattern to have problems like mm -hmm. today actually the little pattern inside your mi the microcosm there gets disturbed mm -hmm. with all the problems that we're facing today. Mm -hmm. So by correcting the bigger pattern, you're also collecting the individual patterns mm -hmm. of every person living in the area. So it's a very, very important thing to, uh, to do. Mm -hmm. What kind of, uh, what would the world look like if, if it was done on a global, like worldwide? What, 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 how would that change our, our the world today. Well, everybody's speaking about the golden age. Mm -hmm. Now, you must understand, the golden age means that we know that in the constellations, there will be, in the sky, there will be this balancing energy. It is going to infuse the whole sky. Now, if the golden age is up there, it doesn't mean that it's going to come and knock at your door. Mm -hmm. You see, you have to open your door you mm -hmm. have to invite it in. Mm -hmm. If you don't have, let's say, the gold in your heart, the gold in the sky will not come down. You have to make this resonance. So what we are doing with things like biogeometry here, we are empowering humanity in order to enter into resonance and to achieve this golden age in every aspect of our work. Now, what... Uh, will it do to humanity? I hope that we will reach a utopia or a golden age. I hope so, because it, it's either or. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you don't have much choice. Mm -hmm. Either we are intelligent enough to achieve that, or bye-bye, and some other civilization will come later on who are more intelligent, and maybe they will do it. So, mm -hmm. so it, there isn't much choice here. Mm -hmm. Pier Paolo, do you want to weigh in on that a little bit? Uh, I mean, you're, you're, you're involved at a uh, you know, uh, at a very practical level, designing yes. homes and other things. Well, as um, I, I have said pre before, this is um, this house has a five kilometers radius of influence, and um, 
one thing that uh, came to me when Ibrahim was speaking about the power spots is that actually with biogeometry you can reconstruct a power spot because of the shapes, because of the attachments and everything that we can use so that we can protect from EMF. We can also um, change geopathic stress which is very important because there are certain magnetic grids which are carriers of very negative things because they are passing through because what we have done to earth so with biogeometry we can change with the power of numbers those negative effects and um, <laughs> uh, no does that mean <laughs> I, I, you guys got some secret going on oh, here. Oh, that's the power of number. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's not a tattoo. Yeah, Rose I actually yeah. was uh, was sleeping on one of these uh, bankers' grids, <laughs> and uh, to change that, so all these um, parameters and um, way of building and uh, protecting humanity will form eventually this canvas that will elevate each one of us. When you mentioned geopathic stress there, yes. are, are you, is it possible then for using ge uh, biogeometry to uh, do things like ameliorate the potential of earthquakes to cause Absolutely. harm? Absolutely. Yes, <laughs> what we were teaching the group <laughs> last November actually, and that's what Rose actually learned. Uh, we divided the earth into certain regions and we allocated uh, a region for every group and we taught them a method of detecting the disturbances and correcting them and then we gave them a set of symbols <coughs> like this so that it becomes fairly easy they detect the disturbance areas and then on a google map they detect the disturbance areas and then they visually throw in a set of symbols into those areas mm -hmm. and they keep doing that until they manage to actually change that and we did some training we did that on areas that were nearby and then we would go out and then test on the areas that were nearby so we had quite some good training uh, on that and then by the end of the week we uh, looked at some of the areas that they had worked on and we found that the rate of earthquakes had gone down actually when they were working. So can you use this using Google Maps and even uh, do something to help say Japan or the Ring, the Ring of yes. Fire areas? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, we have done that. Mm -hmm. yeah. We are doing it. Actually there is an organization that Ibrahim has founded in Asheville uh, with 75 of us which have divided earth in sections and groups of five, six, seven are working on each section to keep calm the earth mm -hmm. with some symbols which are called biosignatures invented by Ibrahim Karim. But it's a difficult thing, it's not an easy thing because when you do measurements in troublesome areas sometimes you get hit backs mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then uh, so th there are I mean, that's why we tell the group there are certain precautions uh, that we should uh, take. Usually when we, it's better, instead of just Google Maps, it's, it's better to go in the areas. Yeah. Like when we say, when we do in Toronto, we'll, we'll bury certain energy shapes or certain bijonct shapes in the ground in different areas mm -hmm. uh, in there. We have here, for mm -hmm. example, here, some of those shapes there you go. So mm -hmm. that's a... Uh, that's a shape that usually is buried in the ground. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get it right. You can't really see it, but uh, we'll... Uh, okay, the idea about... Uh, <coughs> it, it's a shape that big, you see. I, mm -hmm. It's that mm -hmm. big that gets buried in the mm -hmm. ground when you work in regional areas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, what we did here was we took pictures of those shapes and we sort of made three-dimensional engraving inside crystals and made them smaller and then we have here a mini solution what would say and where can you use this mini solution this mini solution is for a house or mm -hmm. for an area you see if you put this in a house 
you have the house and its surrounding area already harmonized. So this is a mi mini individual solution. Mm -hmm. Right. Because we've been talking a lot about large scale projects here, about entire, uh, you know, about houses or cities, yes. but there's so much the individual can do uh, with biogeometry. Yeah, everybody's saying, I can't wait till you make Toronto when I'm electric exactly. sensitive today. Mm -hmm. yes. Give me a solution now. <coughs> and mm -hmm. so we devised those mini solutions. We took our big solution that put yeah. big areas, made them smaller, mm -hmm. put them into shapes like this, so people can get the shape and put it in their home and then uh, th they have uh, a mini solution for their air. Okay, well, we, we're just about out of time here, but, um, and I'm sure, as I do, I, I mean, I've still got a lot of questions, and yes, I believe you when you say, you know, maybe the hardest thing is convincing people about this, yeah. because it, it seems so different from the kind of scientific thinking that we're used to. Yes. Um, but you're here in Toronto, you're here for the Total Health Show, I'm is that right? I'm here for the Total Health Show for a week now, uh, until uh, beginning of next week. So you're going to be, where is it, at the uh, Convention Center? M MTC yes. Center. Yes. Okay. Yes. And uh, I'm speaking on, uh, on uh, Sunday and uh, Saturday. Monday. I'm speaking uh, Saturday at 1 o'clock, room okay. 205. And I'm speaking Sunday at 12 o'clock, same room 205 at the Convention Center. And then we also have there a booth uh, with Toronto Dowsers. Uh, we have a biogeometry booth because my first introduction, the people who invited me here uh, the first time in Toronto was a group uh, called the Toronto Dowsers here. So they invited me over. And uh, so Marilyn Genk, uh, who runs the Toronto Dowsers, she has a booth there. Uh, and our products, those mini solutions or individual solutions mm -hmm. on the books, mm -hmm. they can be found there at the Toronto Dowsers Biogeometry Stand. That's fabulous. So mm -hmm. people yeah. can uh, start to get biogeometry working in their lives uh, just by going to the Total yeah, Health Show. Yeah, and also yes. these kind of things like... Uh, medallions, yeah. medallions, medallions, things to wear, yeah. biosignatures, and so on. Okay, yeah. that's Do you fantastic. have any of the home kits? Uh, we have uh, them, yes. Home we, have, kits? we have home kits like that. I mm -hmm. mean, cubes mm -hmm. like that uh, mm -hmm. that you use with attachments, a small attachment that you put on the electrical cables and one of the water pipes. Yes. It comes in a little box like this. Yes. So it's a little home kit. Yes. And then we have the medallions so that they're on your body all the time. And we have different solutions. We have something for the cell phones. For example, you see yes. here, this is my cell phone. It has something on it like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this isn't your normal cell phone protection mm -hmm. because this has no quantitative effects whatsoever. All mm -hmm. it does it adds the, the energy of a sacred power spot to the object. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's all it does. Mm -hmm. And that's enough mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, when it does. Yes. It's amazing. So yes. people uh, who are curious can go down there and get more information. Are you going to be there as well, Pierre Paul? Absolutely. Yes, we'll be there. <laughs> okay. I'll and never miss an opportunity. And I guess as an architect, if anybody out there is uh, thinking about building uh, a home or something, uh, we are able to serve. <laughs> we are, we <laughs> and, and, you, and employ uh, biogeometric uh, principles in, From in now the design, on, right? That has changed my life. Yeah. I would not build or design without biogeometry principles. Okay, fabulous. So let's, uh, now what's, do you have a website if people want to get in touch with you? www.alberghiniarchitect.com Okay. A-L-B-E-R-G-H-I-N-I dot com. And, uh, and, and the biogeometry site, which is www.biogeometry.com. Biogeometry.com. Biogeometry.com. That simple. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Simple, yeah. yes. All right. Well, it's a real uh, pleasure having you here. Thanks, yeah. guys, yes, for coming pleasure. in. Thank you and for giving us the opportunity. Thank you. Yeah. Thank and you so much. And th yeah. yeah, thank you for your uh, for developing the science and for your generosity in sharing it as well. well. Thank you for for uh, hosting us and uh, th thank you for being part of our family of Bijam. Oh. Absolutely. <laughs> and it's an I honor. I hope to hear new ideas from both of you every time I come. Yes. I mean, <laughs> this time you did the connection. I hope every time you yes. tell me something new because I really I like find that. it very inspiring. Very, yes. And uh, to be yes. honest, when I was in school, my favorite subjects were math and physics. Yes. But then I also have aesthetic and artistic and spiritual ah. uh, orientations. And yeah. I always found that how can I combine them? Well, here's the answer. There you have it. Perfect. Here's the answer. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Rose, that's it for a fabulous show. That was a fabulous show. Yeah. So and thanks for coming in yeah. and doing this uh, oh, today. Oh, my honor, my honor. Uh, okay. Nice to be back. Okay, so okay. we'll just uh, say then bye to everybody and uh, go down to the Soul House show this weekend and uh, 
get. Uh, Don't miss the opportunity because really. uh, you know Dr. Kareem isn't here every day. Absolutely. <laughs> and so uh, we are just going to say bye bye, and uh, we'll be back tomorrow for more Liquid Lunch right here on that channel.com. See you then. Mm -hmm. So good to me So good, so good, so good to me She took me by the hand and showed me Not to take more than I need But that's the last thing that I remember The rest feels like a dream My hair was spinning, didn't know where I was or was I to me so good so good so good